included. There's been times where we've seen uh, a seller try to include a potential tax refund into uh, into working capital or some other assets. You know, that, that what, what are some of the more common ones that you see being placed that you know certainly don't fit in in the definition? Yeah. So I think when we think about working capital in terms of this mechanism, um, it should really be just. The, the recurring assets and liabilities of the business. Um, there are other places within the, the purchase agreement contract where a, where a seller can make sure that they get paid for things like a, a tax okay. refund, right? If one hasn't come through yet, um, there are other places within the contract where you can make sure that they get the benefit of that. You know, putting that into the working capital mechanism um, isn't always the best thing because it just muddies the water on what it's supposed to be, which is a really a just a, a normalization of the, you know, puts and takes on cash, you know, your current assets and your current liabilities. Um, so that's really the goal. And so I would, I would just urge people to, you know, if you have uh, other items like that, that you just deal with it in, in a way outside of working right. capital. Yeah. So be best, you know, to simplify the working capital calculation, you know, d and dumb it down to exactly what it entails. Yep. And then if there is something else, put in other areas of, uh, yeah. of the purchase and sale agreement or uh, find ways to, uh, to get compensated or you know, vice versa. Right.